The following overview on data integrity was delivered as part of a DB2 class by ProTech on March 31st of 2014. I want to talk a little, little bit about something called integrity. Now, there are different rules that the database can live by. All right, these are integrity rules. And one integrity rule is called entity integrity, which simply means that your primary key must contain a value. All right, so what we're really saying is the primary key cannot be null. That's what we're really saying. Primary key must contain a value and specifically a unique value. Now, there's another thing called domain integrity. Domain integrity means a particular column may only possess a certain set of different values. So, for example, I might have a I might have a job column out there, and one of my values that's valid is manager, and one of them is clerk, and one of them is sales, et cetera, et cetera. If the list of those values are, are relatively manageable, we can define domain integrity to the database where the database itself will do the validation, and we don't have to worry about the application programs. There's also one called user integrity. User integrity means certain columns may have certain values that relate to a particular type of entry in the table. So, for example, if I have a, an account, an account is out there, in terms of the owner of that account, maybe there can only be one primary owner. So, in terms of the account type, if this individual is a primary owner, then their value must be P. But if I have secondary owners out there, then I might have a value of S for those. So again, from the relationship of the data to the user, that's what we have there. And that can be enforced as well, but that's a little more complex. But the real important one that you need to be aware of before you write your programs is something called referential integrity. And referential integrity defines the relationship between your tables. How do we maintain integrity in terms of the relationships? And there's really a, three delete rules that we can define, but if you take a situation like we have on page 219. On 219, I have a customer, and a customer may have zero, one, or more orders. Now, here's a key question. If a customer is deleted, and that customer has orders, what should we do as far as the orders are concerned? I got two options here. One option is to say that I want to have a referential integrity rule of cascade, and another one says I want to have referential integrity rule of restrict. Now, let me go over to my whiteboard. So here I've got customer, here I've got my orders. This is customer, this is orders. There is a relationship that exists between those. And we also said that we can have a customer that doesn't have to have an order, okay? So we've got this. Now, the key question is if we attempt to delete a customer, how do we want to handle that in terms of that customer's orders? All right, We want to delete the customer. So what do we do? Do we want to automatically, automatically apply the delete down to the orders level? If so, then the rule is cascade, meaning Cascade deletes all dependent relationships. In other words, if I attempt to delete the customer, all orders will be automatically deleted by the database. This requires no intervention no programming intervention. It just happens automatically. Restrict. Restrict says. Restrict does not allow the delete of 
a parent if there are children. Now, what exactly do we mean by that? What we mean by that is that if someone were to attempt to delete what we call a parent, parent's obviously a, a higher, higher level structure, what the database will do is the database will look to see does that parent have any children, all right? Are there, are there any children for that parent, okay? If there are children, then the delete is restricted from occurring. However, if there are no children, then the delete of the parent is permitted, which basically restricts says you can't delete any, any data structure that has dependent rows or has foreign key references. That's really what that's saying. So referential integrity rules, can it affect how you program? Does it affect the, the way the data exists out there in the database? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. So do you as a developer need to be aware of that? Yep, you need to be aware of that, number one. You need to be aware of that before you write your code because that's going to dictate the type of queries that you write as well as your logic. Okay, so that that's all uh, that I really want you to kind of take away from a design perspective. The other thing is you need to be you need to be aware of referential integrity rules because if you're inserting new data, you want to make sure that the parent is inserted before the child. You can't insert a child. You know, if you have cascade as your rule, you can't insert a child and then try to insert the parent. It, it won't work. It's you. You've got to have your hierarchy defined. And, and in terms of update, if you do an update and change, let's say a foreign key value, the parent already needs to be out there. So again, you, you have to be careful on that. From a modeling perspective, uh, you know, you now know what you got to do, and you now know what you're going to be looking for. You're going to look for the the diagram as well as you're going to want to identify what is your primary key, what is your foreign key, and then finally, are there any referential integrity rules in place, and and if so, what are they? And that's all stuff that you need to get from the data group.